after a win to save their season and their biggest win of the season, now we all wonder, what are the Flames' chances to make the playoffs and what is their path to getting to the 2023 postseason. What's going on? It's Pat Steinberg along with you. Welcome to a little Flames Talk Extra. You can catch Flames Talk on Sportsnet 960 The Fan every day from 4 till 6 p.m. And, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. And we're asking that question because, yeah, the Flames just pulled off without questions, no questions asked, their biggest win of the season on Wednesday night. 3-1 over the Winnipeg Jets, and uh, it was contributions across the board. Andrew Mangiapane ties the game in the second period. You had huge goals from Walker Dewar and Nikita Zadorov in the third period to turn a 1-0 Jets lead after 20 minutes of play into a 3-1 Flames victory on a night where they had no choice. If they wanted to keep their season alive, the Flames had no choice but to win, beat the Jets, heads up, in regulation and they did all those things and now you know their season is still not saved there's still a lot of work to do but at the very least they gave themselves a fighting chance from here until the end of the year now The Jets still absolutely control this thing. Winnipeg is still the team that is in the pocket here, and they're the team that is is going to determine with the way they play who gets in and who doesn't get in. The Jets own the tie break. The Jets have one fewer game played. So they, they are the group that controls this thing. But if you're looking for a path to the playoffs for the Calgary Flames, it's it's not all that complicated anymore. And it's not necessarily something that is going to happen because even if the Flames win out, They don't control their fate. All the Jets need to do is be tied with the Flames at the end of the year, and they'll make the playoffs because Winnipeg owns all the tie breaks. If you're uh, not familiar, the tie break situation has Winnipeg uh, with more regulation wins. Now, the Flames could still catch the Jets in regulation wins. Uh, They could catch them and tie them, but the next tie break is regulation overtime wins, and the Flames cannot catch the Jets there. So Winnipeg owns the tie breaks and they've got the one more game to play as compared to the flames but the path for the flames I I think it starts with this they got to win out I think that is that is number one and and while if they don't win out they still have a chance by winning out they give themselves a real fighting chance at the end of the year Calgary's uh, final schedule is they're into Vancouver on Saturday night to take on the Canucks and what I think is going to be potentially the hardest of the three games that they play between now and the end of the season. I just get this feeling that Vancouver is going to be amped up for that one. The way last Friday's loss went when Canucks, Canucks fans were really unhappy with the penalty that led to Jonathan Huberdeau's game tying goal uh, late in the third period that of course led to Tyler Toffoli's overtime winning goal. So I think that there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of amped up Canucks who are yeah we know the Canucks aren't going to the playoffs but it feels like that might be one of those situations where the Canucks lay it all on the line and that's their season so that game from a flame standpoint is a little concerning but we'll see how they respond um, then they have got Nashville at home and of course the Predators remain very much in this mix and have no interest in going away when it comes to the Western Conference playoff picture and then they close out Wednesday of next week against the San Jose Sharks. So that's Calgary's remaining schedule. So if they can go three for three, that puts the pressure on the Jets and they'd have to win three of their last four. Winnipeg has games at home to Nashville, at home to San Jose, and then road games in Minnesota and Colorado to wrap up their year. And so because the Flames have put a little bit more pressure on, now maybe Winnipeg gripping it a little bit more. As much as they completely control this thing, all the Jets need to do is win three of those four um, and and the Flames don't get in regardless of what they do. If the Flames can win out, all of a sudden, even if the Jets win their next two at home, then there's a little bit more pressure. And the interesting thing is, Calgary finishes their season, as we mentioned, next week at home to San Jose on Wednesday. The following day, the Jets finish their season against Colorado. And so I'm really curious to see whether or not we're talking about that game that the Jets play in Denver 
deciding how this thing goes. Maybe it's decided before then. I don't know, but that could be really interesting on the final day of the regular season. Hey, give the Flames credit, I, and I absolutely will. There have been multiple times this year where we could just say, you know what? That's probably the final nail. That's probably it. And this team is going to roll over. And not once have they rolled over. And I thought after Tuesday's loss to Chicago, where that was an unacceptable, and you could not lose to the 32nd ranked team in the NHL on Tuesday night on home ice with an opportunity to really put yourself in the driver's seat with a win the next day in Winnipeg. And they lost that game in Chicago 4 3 on home ice and made the Winnipeg game that much more desperate. Now, now, who knows? Maybe they beat the if they beat the Blackhawks, they don't beat the Jets. I have no idea. But I do know that that Jet, that that Blackhawks loss made it so that regardless of what happens, the Flames aren't in the driver's seat, even as much as right now they're a passenger, but maybe with one hand on the steering wheel. But um, I give them credit because the the loss to Chicago looked really listless at times, and you could easily have made the argument that that was the white flag moment for the Flames. And the very next day, they roll into Winnipeg and make sure it is not a white flag moment. And I give them a lot of credit for being able to do that. You know who else I give a lot of credit to? Jacob Markstrom, who made 34 stops on 35 shots in Winnipeg Wednesday night. He was outstanding. And you know what's crazy? I think the three best outings that Jacob Markstrom has had this year, uh, two of them have come when he has started the second halves of back-to-back. The first, the, the number one outing for Jacob Markstrom in terms of how good he was, was without question his huge effort in Minnesota in early March, which came after after a game the following, uh, the prior night rather, in Dallas. He went into Minnesota, shut them out, and the Flames win one nothing in a shootout. One of the first scoreless tie shootouts we've had in a long, long time. Uh, the other big game that he had was that win over Los Angeles recently where he was really strong in that 2-1 victory the Flames had over the Kings at the Scotiabank Saddledome. But in terms of importance... I don't know if it gets any bigger than the 34 stops he made in Winnipeg to keep Calgary's season alive. And that was that was clutch vintage Jacob Markstrom and exactly what they needed from him. And I give the guy a lot of credit because in a spot where his season was on the line, in a spot where the prior night in Chicago, uh, the back-to-back -back situation, he did not play very well against the Blackhawks, neither did the team in front of him, but didn't play very well against the Blackhawks, goes into Winnipeg the following night and puts together an absolute gem, was named the number one star at Canada Life Center and was the deserving number one star. And so here's the thing. You know, Jacob has had a very up-and-down last number of weeks. He's had a very rough season, all things considered, based on what we know he's capable of. The Flames in their final three games absolutely need Jacob Markstrom to be his, you know, on his A game. He doesn't need to steal games for him, uh, for them. He doesn't need to be the number one star each night. But the Flames need Jacob Markstrom to be one of their best players and to be on his A game for the rest of the season. And if they, if if he does that then they get get a chance to make the playoffs and then he's got a chance to be in that situation again and need to bring his A game again. And so I guess what I'm saying is he was outstanding against Winnipeg and that has got to be the norm. That level, that brand of Markstrom has to be the norm from now until whenever the season comes to an end. And whether that's the next three games and they don't make it or they do end up getting in and then they're getting ready to play game number one. They need that Jacob Markstrom. They can't have the Chicago Markstrom where he wasn't great, the team wasn't in front of either but you know you're like yeah well, there were a couple that maybe you would have liked to have back whereas against Winnipeg he did not let any in that he should have had back he stole a couple um and and you just need Jacob to be that guy that gives you a chance to win and always gives you that uh, or, or gives you that feeling that maybe he can do a little bit more and if you can get a game Markstrom for the rest of these three games 
then you've got the opportunity to make the playoffs, and then he needs to be A-game Markstrom come the postseason if they get there. So the path is somewhat clear, and basically the best opportunity for the Flames is to win out. That really puts the pressure on the Winnipeg Jets. If the Flames don't win out, it lets the Jets off the hook a little bit and gives them a little bit of an easier spot to get in. We'll see how it all plays out. The Flames have absolutely kept their season alive, though, with Wednesday's huge win against Winnipeg. My name is Pat Steinberg. You can catch us on Flames Talk, 4 to 6 p.m. every day on Sportsnet 960 The Fan, or go get us wherever you get your podcasts. We're available on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon. Would love if you go and hit subscribe. Love to have you along for the Flames Talk ride. That'll do it for Flames Talk Extra. We'll talk to you again next week. We'll see where the Flames are next week and if we're talking about playoff hockey or not.